Hey everybody, how's it going? I'd like to correct a common misconception regarding right to repair that I have some fault in putting out there into the world. So when I made this channel, it's pretty much named Lewis Rossman. It's me. I talk about whatever I want to discuss at the time, whether it was in the beginning cell phone radiation, me talking about why Groupon sucks, me doing board repairs, talking about business stuff, talking about life stuff, news stuff, or board repair. Over the past eight years that I've had this channel, I have become a central figure in right to repair. Whether this is a good thing, whether this is a bad thing, others can argue, but it's undisputed at this point that every time right to repair comes up, my name comes up. I thought that if I just sit down and discuss whatever it is that's on my mind as a repair shop owner, that maybe if I had a perfect channel, that I'd get 100% of the other 200 or 300 repair shop owners in the country that had a business similar to mine to watch and subscribe. The idea of there being 1.5 million people watching and becoming a central figure in something like the right to repair movement, that just, if you told me that in 2012, I'd just tell you're a moron. And because I discuss Apple a lot, there is this misconception that right to repair is an issue that only affects Apple users, and that if you simply do not buy Apple products, right to repair as an issue goes away. Because all the issues that I discuss, where the manufacturers go out of their way to try and keep you from being able to service the products you own, that's just an Apple problem. And you'll see this happen all the time. Even if I discuss issues that are not particularly unique to Apple, you'll see people say, just don't buy Apple just don't buy Apple. If you don't buy Apple, problem solved. And I want to correct that misconception because that is not true. This is a video I did a while ago where Samsung was doing serialization and pairing of parts to their devices. They are you know, the company that people buy from when they don't like Apple. This is an article that was released recently from United States Public Interest Research Group where they discuss how hospital technicians are renewing the urgent call for right to repair. And in 2018, any of you who watched a video that I did in New York, I found someone who was dealing with the repairs of medical equipment and scope and he also spoke to me about all the problems that they face in that area. There is this other link that someone sent me a few times uh, yesterday. Farmers are having to hack their own tractors just to make repairs. Owners are turning to hack software from Eastern Europe as farm equipment companies won't license it to them directly. Farm equipment, tractor, cell phones and laptops from other companies, home appliances, dryers, all sorts of devices. And with the recent right to repair bill that passed in Massachusetts, until recently cars as well were all included under this umbrella of right to repair. Right to repair is not an Apple issue. Right to repair is a cultural issue. 50 to 70 years ago, even the most greedy of companies with the greediest of CEOs and greediest of board members would have never tried to touch that third rail of taking away your ability to service the product you own. They may try to overcharge you, upsell you, every single thing that they can, but they wouldn't take away your ability to service the product you own. This is not just an Apple thing. This is an every company thing. This is a virus that is spreading throughout our culture, throughout our business culture, not simply throughout Apple. That brings us to the question, then Lewis, why do you always talk about Apple? I'm an Apple product repair shop owner. On this channel, I discuss the things that are relevant to me in my life and what I notice from my perspective. This channel is not called youtube.com slash right to repair. This channel is called Lewis Rossman. Lewis Rossman runs an Apple product repair shop. So Lewis Rossman discusses fixing Apple products, the running a business repairing Apple products, how to repair Apple products, and when Apple does something that makes it more difficult for me to repair their products for no good reason, I will discuss that and bring it up. And those tend to be the videos that go the most viral. If I do a video on VCCIO versus vCore or how to actually fix a motherboard, nobody cares. Like 1% of my viewership actually watches board repair videos. When I do a video where I curse out Apple because I am frustrated and aggravated after five or six or seven years of crap dumb all trying to work on these products, that's the video that winds up getting the three million, the five million, and the six million views. I was an Apple product repair person for six years before I even knew what the term right to repair meant or really kind of became conscious of this as a societal or cultural issue. So when I come on this channel, I talk about what it is that I know for the most part. I am not a financial services expert. I am not an investment expert, but I am a PP bus expert. And I'll damn well claim that I am the best PP bus repair expert in a 30 mile radius, maybe 50. But 
I discuss what I know. I discuss things from my perspective. But I do not want to take away from the fact that if you were to probably walk up to Samsung and say, do you have a schematic for the latest phone? He, I'm willing to give you $1,000 for it, that they will probably give you the middle finger the same way Apple does. Apple is a good example for two reasons. The first is that they have this intersection of being incredibly expensive, so people want to fix them. They, are, they, they have this aura around them of really caring about about the customer and having amazing customer service, which is pretty much the exact opposite of the repair experience many have with their products and how they treat repair shops. And they are considered to be exceptionally high quality products, which uh, to me is kind of just funny for reasons that I've gone over in many videos in this channel. I have one on Apple engineering. So when you make a product that is, that is often designed with flaws that two and $300 racers don't have, and then you make it incredibly difficult to repair when it's very expensive, they often make a good example. But make no mistake, there are many other manufacturers out there that are often as anti-repair as Apple. And the other reason that they make a good example is because they often have, they often start trends that everybody else then copies, whether it's taking away a micro SD card slot, whether it's gluing the battery and all sorts of this type of stuff. It's usually Apple that begins and then everybody else starts to copy once they realize what Apple was able to get away with and sell. So rather than innovate for themselves, many companies simply copy them. So when they do something that's anti-repair, you bet your ass it's going to be showing up in every other product. As I say, Apple does serious, Apple starts screwing with serialization and Samsung is not far behind them. This is an issue that is not even simply limited to cell phones or, or laptops or any of the stuff that I work on. It's not limited to one brand. This is something that is spreading. It's spreading to medical devices. It's spreading to cars. It's spreading to tractors. It's spreading to home appliances. And here's the thing. I'm trying to bring awareness to this as a more than Apple issue before we get to the point where everyone has just accepted it. If we all push back against this now, then there's a chance of us having a repairable culture going into the future. But if we don't, then that whole thing of you'll own nothing and be happy, that BS prophecy for the future, that will come true. That will come true if all of us simply believe that the answer is to just, just don't buy Apple. If you dislike Apple products, if Apple has screwed you over in the past, then by all means, don't buy their product. But at the same time, don't be disillusioned to the idea that that solves the right to repair problem, that solves the right to repair question, and it's off the table. And to be clear, if you purchase an Apple product, if that Apple product has worked well for you, if that Apple product makes you productive and able to do your job, I have no problem with you purchasing it. The thing that confuses me is when they screw a user over, the user says, I got screwed over, I spent $5,000, they screwed me over, and then they spend 6000 on a new one. That's the part that usually blows my mind and just causes me to, to, to short circuit internally. But if you buy it and it, it does the job for you, by all means, buy it. But if you say, I'm simply not going to buy Apple products and then it's all done, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is something that affects everyone, every single area. And just because you don't own the product that the person who is the most popular on the internet for talking about right to repair says is not a very repairable product, that does not mean that it isn't a problem. Hopefully this clarifies things. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.